Well, I'm sorry you're looking at my feet, but it was so cold this morning, I went hunting with a buddy of mine. And it was really too cold to work on this thing. It was 25 degrees down here in Florida. Yeah, I know certain people are going to say I, I wimp, I wimped up and everything. Well, I've been down here in the warm weather for so long. I just lost my ability to... The ability to uh, love the cold. Well, here we go. I did what I needed to do. I had to turn those pistons around. Oh, is that a pain in the ass? I hate correcting someone else's mistakes. And that's what I did. I corrected somebody else's mistakes. See, I bought this tractor. And, a, and its partner, a gray one, not a gray line, but a gray one. Now, what you're looking at is this tractor was made in 1965. That is the same year Ford changed over to the three-cylinder model. So I am not wrong in saying it's a 65. And it was a it was a basket case. I admit that. I admit that. But the gray one was even worse off. I had no knowledge of a magneto. None. I didn't even want to touch the magneto. But I have since discovered I should have kept the gray one and this one. The gray one probably would have been a lot easier to get fixed because it was just simply the Magneto. It had the flathead four in that one. The things I have done to this tractor as is follow. When I first got it home, first thing as I did was I got the thing to fire off. She ran beautiful. The water pump was shot. I mean, it was pouring water everywhere out of that water pump. So I changed the water pump. I got my front tire fixed. It's got a new inner tube in it at that time. So I started riding around the yard with the tractor. The whole time, I kept an eye on the temperature and everything. It never went over 140 degrees, which I thought was a little odd. But then one day I decided I needed to start using some of the attachments I had here. I got a bush hog. I was going to use the bush hog. The tractor wouldn't start. The starter fried. Well, as you can see... There's the oil pump, oil filter right there. There's no way to get that starter out without getting the oil pump out of the way. Well, I took the oil pump off, the oil filter off. Oil filter was full of water. Yep, full of water. And I figured, oh shit. Okay, took took got the oil filter off. I pulled the old starter out. Then I researched the engine and discovered that this engine was a hundred percent rebuildable. I mean real simple rebuild. Well, no problem. All right, all right. I checked my barons and everything, all good barons. But I figured I wasn't going to take a chance on the oil pump. So I changed the oil pump, too. That was a pain in the ass. 
The only way to change the oil pump is when this thing is on an engine stand and you can flip it upside down. I found out the hard way. Okay, got that done. Got the head rebuilt. Got a cheap head gasket from an Atlanta-based electrical supply house online. Big mistake. The head gasket let go. And here's the funny thing about that head gasket. It was frickin' Chinese. It was a piece of shit. Because I was running the engine one day, and there was bubbles. Hot gas bubbles coming out from the head gasket. And I figured, oh, crap. At the time, she wasn't leaking any water. So I kept running it for a while longer. Then my distributor let go. Oh, I was in terrible shock over that. Then, met up with a guy online, locally, and he told me where to get a distributor. It only cost me $19. So I say, oh, what the hell? Damn thing works great. I've got the tractor running good, driving around again, and she overheated. You know what happened then? Second head gasket let go, and it wasn't even a year old. <laughs> then I made another discovery. The previous owner put the pistons in 180 degrees off. Yep. I will show you. See these little notches right here? These notches all have to be going in that direction. In that direction over there. Well, when I took this thing apart, all these were facing backwards. Oh, it was running good and everything, but... After seeing that and looking up the research and having a lot of people tell me, hey, those pistons are in backwards. Then I figured, oh, well, if I'm taking this thing apart again to change out the head gasket, I may as well turn around and put this damn thing back together the way it is supposed to be. Oh, man. I also made another discovery the ignition system that was in this tractor wasn't even for this tractor it wasn't even for this make of tractor it was a general motors 1970s car ignition and one of the things i did is I pulled that damn thing out. I got the wiring book out and I rewired this damn tractor back the way it was factory. And it's a lot easier to start now. Because the way this thing started before was you turn the key and you hold it in the start position like you would on a regular car. Well, you see that little button right there? That little button is the actual starter switch. And that cannot engage unless the transmission is in neutral. So, that's what prompted my rewiring. I put it back to factory wiring. Headlights came on like they were supposed to. I had to change out the gauges because most of the gauges are so rotted and the water temperature was the worst. So I was getting false signals from the water gauge. And the tachometer didn't work at all. So I changed out my complete cluster. Amps. 
water, oil pressure, tachometer. But what's one thing was really funny. My gas tank is wired for a gas gauge. But the thing was never wired for an alternator meter. So <laughs> the gas gauge was supposed to be where the amp meter was, and it was an idiot light right there. So Frankenstein here is being slowly but surely put back together right. Yes, and my other headache. My three-point hitch didn't work. I tried everything what the tractor people online said to do. Pump air into the reservoir while it's running and everything. And I made the decision to pull the top lid off. That top lid that I'm talking about is right there. Those arms and everything were all attached. I had to pull that thing off. That is not a one-person job. That is a two-person job. It damn near killed me. That, that plate, that cast plate, all complete, is 180 pounds. I lifted that thing off. I flipped it over for the hydraulic ram that lifts the back end. They welded a cast iron piece and it was warped. That's why it didn't work. So eBay again. I paid about a hundred and something dollars for a complete ram system. And I put it all back together the way it was supposed to be. I fired up the tractor. And I had to wait and wait and wait. And I pumped air into it and everything. And all of a sudden, all by itself, it came alive. You watch the arms just slowly raise up. Now, for those of you that don't know what I mean about arms... These are the arms, right here. These are the things that actually lift the attachments or tools. Like my rotor tiller. That was a freebie out of the trash. That's a five-foot rotor tiller. Then I got my bush hog. That came with the tractor. My pan, that came with the tractor. My lift arm, that came with the tractor. My fertilizer spreader, that was the second deal. For a cheap 22 pistol, I got that and a finish mower. Well, finish mower was too small for my tractor. But I needed something a little bit more for what I'm going to use it for. I got me a grading blade, five foot, but I'm going to have to rework it. As you can see, they put a grading blade cutting edge to beef up the blade. Well, I got to cut all that stuff off, replace the bolts. And put this blade down there to reinforce it. Because this thing is actually adjustable. These bolts line up with holes that are not seen. But on this side, right there. So I can make this adjustable so I can swing it out wide, and clear a ditch, or make a ditch.
and then I can finish all this mess of Hurricane Michael debris. <laughs> sort of reminds me of helping somebody with a Michigan front end loader. I enjoyed working on that too. Harold Card Sr. I enjoy that man taught me so much on welding and fabrication. I will go back to doing that with this tractor. Barry showed me neat little tricks on shooting a grade. My years of doing asphalt. Uh, up to 16 minutes. Okay. Here you can see my smiling. My, I guess you can't see my smiling face. I, this thing does not rotate in this manner. So here's my smiling face. It's dirty and everything. Gray hair and all. A nice little house that Sandy and I got. You can't see it, but there's a lake on the other side of the house where my deer come in. And I'm I am a bit of a trader. Yankee trader, that is. Where I work, they were redo, redoing the buildings. So I got all that nice pretty sheet metal. And I have a use for that. This pole barn that I'm in. Eventually, I'm going to put a skin on it. And the only attachment that's going to sit in here is my rototiller. Because that damn thing disappears. That's $1,500. And I ain't going to let that thing go. I'll let any of the other things go, but I will not let that go. All right, I'm about done. Temperature's dropping. We'll see you guys later. Hopefully next time this thing will be running.